Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Maz and today I'm in Swindon. And in today's video, I'll be trying out this E30 325i. This car was kindly lent to me by Callum from Hartley Paintworks. A quick overview, the E30 is the chassis code for the second generation BMW 3 Series. The 3 Series replaced the 02 Series back in the mid 70s with the E21. And then after the E21 came this, the E30, from 1982 to 1994 a 12-year production run over one generation. The E30 comes in four-door saloon, two-door saloon, two-door cabriolet, and five-door touring. And Bauer also makes conversions. This particular car is a 325i, so it has the flagship six-cylinder engine. Interestingly, the flagship model, the M3, only came with a four-cylinder. Non-M model has more cylinders than its M variant. And whilst the M3 deserves its own separate video, if you are an owner of a BMW from this period of history and would like your car featured, feel free to reach out. Here in Britain, we got the 316, the 318, the 320, and the 325i with the M3 at the very top. Interestingly, the M3 was only made in left-hand drive, so other right-hand drive countries had to make do with alternatives, such as the South African 333i and the New Zealand M325i. That South African model actually uses a straight six from the E23 7 series. And here are the stats for the 325i. And of course this particular car is the four door saloon. This is the first ever 3 series to come with four doors. The E21 on the other hand only came as a two door saloon. Also it is the first 3 Series to come with a Touring variant later on as well. And that Touring variant lasted all the way up until 1994, whilst the Saloon went out of production around 1991 to make way for the E36. Just to clarify, there has been a three-year crossover period between the E30 and the E36. Interestingly, the 325iX was also the first ever all-wheel drive BMW which we never got here in Britain. Generally speaking, it's probably the most important car in BMW's lineup, as well as the most iconic era. And one thing I really liked about BMWs from this period, not just with this one, same with the five and the seven and the six, is that the bonnet would open forwards. The benefit of that is if the latch fails, the bonnet will not swing open. Plus various other car manufacturers from this era did that too, including Jaguar. And interestingly, there is a resurgence of front hinge bonnets, as seen with Ferrari, with the Puro Sangue, and I hope in the future BMW also return to this layout as well. So here is the front of the E30, or the second generation BMW 3 Series, and I think BMW have absolutely nailed it with the design. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said with their current design language. So if we come to the front, this particular car has the optional headlight washers which move in synchronization. It's also got the smiley which help illuminate the road better. And this was also a time when BMW kidneys were the right size. It all flows well with the headlights and the grille area in general. This was also from a time when indicators were generally housed separately. And of course this particular car has fog lights. And I also forgot to mention this is a later car, so it's got the later style bumper. And as always, the BMW badge is always on the bonnet, which in the case of this front hinged model, the badge points forwards once you open the bonnet. Coming to the side, these wheels are aftermarket, but they do look very similar to the weave design that BMW put on this car, or this era of car, I should say. This was also from a time when door handles weren't really grab handles, they were just the one-sided ones. Coming to the rear window, this has the obligatory Hofmeister kink, which has been a BMW design since the days of Wilhelm Hofmeister. 
It's got a sunroof and that pattern is aftermarket. This aerial here retracts the moment you start the car. And as always, shout out to Hartley Paintworks. He's also responsible for all the stuff that's been done to my XF and my F-Type. Coming to the back, the lip spoiler in this particular example does add some presence to the rear end. This has the later style tail lights where the reverse light is horizontal as opposed to vertical. And if we look very closely, there is a slight angle on the inside of the tail light, meaning the early lights and the later ones are not interchangeable. And of course, it's got twin exhausts, though these ones are aftermarket. And as I mentioned, this is a later car with the later bumpers. And of course, there is your 325i badge. Back in the days, BMW would link each numbers together. And just recently, BMW have dropped the I for fuel injection, since carburetors aren't really a thing in today's day and age. In order to get to the back, all you have to do is press this button here, and then the boot partially pops open, and then you do the rest manually. And for an 80s car, this is very, very spacious. Here's how much space you get. Interestingly, with the saloon and the cabriolet, the number plate stays in place and only the top half opens. Whereas if you get a touring model, the opening actually includes the number plate. One of the best things about these older BMWs is you get this little toolbox here. So if I unwind this, you can do some roadside work on your E30. And this particular example has all its tools in its box. And one thing I also like is when you open the toolbox, it lies flat. Unfortunately, just like any BMW, the emblem is starting to fade. And to match the bumpers, you get this side molding on the side, which has a slight opening here to let you open the rear door without clashing with the front. Coming to the back, and unfortunately, this is where some negatives come. That is on my driving position. And as you can see, there is no space in the back at all. In fact, there's no head restraints either. Interestingly, the seat belts do come in their normal positions, but if you get an E36, they actually come from the center. Interestingly, you even get an armrest, which is also well engineered. It sort of rises when opening. But yes, I'm definitely not trying to get in the back. This particular example has electric rear windows, though in some entry-level cars you do get wind-down manual ones. And the door handle is made of plastic, and there are no pockets on the doors. Before we come to the business end, here's the keyhole to lock and unlock the car. Interestingly, this period of BMW, you can also get double locks and immobilizers, which this one does not have, meaning you get not one, but two keyholes. And now, opening the door. Here's what the interior looks like. Just like the old E21, the center console is angled towards the driver. You do get door pockets on the front doors. And interestingly, instead of having your window switches on the door, it's on the center console, you get your mirror controls instead. This door handle is very far back. I'm guessing the positioning is to match with the two-door, since two-door cars have their doors all the way here. Now coming inside, let's just quickly put this in here. Now coming inside, you can tell that you're in a car from a completely different period. So here's my point of view, no airbag on the steering wheel, and you've got the M colours on the bottom prong. And it does feel a bit thin-rimmed and very oversized. And here are your period correct dials, which they've been using throughout the 70s, throughout the 80s, throughout the 90s, up until around mid-2000s. And whilst it's too bright to showcase this, at night they glow orange. 
And to me, these dials do look more driver focused than what you get today. What you get today is the two dials are actually quite spread apart. But this one has very clear fonts. Interestingly, the fuel gauge, rather than having E for empty, you get R for reserve. And if I try to turn on the ignition, the temperature gauge does this funny dance and all the warning lights turn on. This particular car has an aftermarket Sony system, but if we look down here, you get slots for your cassettes. And this centre console is actually left-hand drive since the handbrake is on the left. And this particular car has a four-speed automatic. If you are a manual owner and would like me to review your car, feel free to reach out. As I've mentioned, even though the back doors have their window switches on the doors, the front ones don't. As a result, they're in the centre console and same with the rear ones as well. Bizarrely, that means if you have a passenger here, they can control the driver's window from here as well. And as I've mentioned, the centre console is very heavily tilted towards the driver. Unfortunately, a lot of these plastics do start to crack as they age. And here's what the dials look like. And one thing I really liked about BMWs from this period is that you can actually adjust how much air you want going to the windows, to yourself, and to your feet. So instead of having a button or a switch to turn on your front demisters, there's actually a specific procedure for that. Your rear demisters are all the way up here. You've got your hazards in the middle, and that's a blank switch. Please tell me in the comments what's that for. And of course this was from a time when you only had one dial for temperature. Back in the days, ashtrays were very common and there's even a cigarette lighter here, which has definitely been used. And being an 80s German car, there are no cup holders. Back in the days, the Germans did not see drinking as a viable option while driving, but they did with smoking. And as I've mentioned, here's the automatic selector. It's a four speed torque converter. And for some reason, they decided to make the gator look like a dustpan brush. Obviously, you've got two pedals, and just like any other BMW, the accelerator is floor mounted. Here's what the seats look like. These particular ones are leather, and they've got lots of bolsters on them, so I'm guessing they're from an M Tech car. These obviously are aftermarket, and as I've mentioned, that door handle is very far back. Um, it could be because they try to align it with the two door equivalent since their B pillars are further back. This car has sun visors, unfortunately, there's no vanity mirror for the driver, but there is one for the passenger. There is a sunroof in this car as well, and you get an overhead console where you press this button to check if everything's okay. And I forgot to mention, over here is a screen where you can choose what information you want to see. This is sort of like a precursor to BMW's infotainment system, the iDrive. But it is great to see where it all came from. And I forgot to mention, here are your indicator stalks. Luckily they work properly, because if you get into a newer BMW, you pick a direction and it would self-center. And of course you got grab handles here which are fixed retractable ones weren't really a thing back in the 80s and let's see if that sunroof opens it most certainly does so that's the exterior and interior done now so let's see what this car is like to drive so seat belt on Put on the brake, start the car, and off we go. So from first impressions, the steering wheel does feel a little heavy when setting off, but once you're moving it starts to lighten up. As I mentioned, the steering wheel is very thin rimmed, 
so there's lots of turning and force required to make the move but in this supermarket car park I'm having very minimal issues here comes a sharp right hander lots of arm movement but again I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker unless I was in the city centre or the town centre but here in Swindon they don't have any town centre roads it's all pedestrianised so yeah roundabout fair bit of body roll I am feeling a few lean-ins but that being said the seat that being said the seat bolsters are generous but due to the seat cushion fitted to this particular car they sort of minimize the bolsters a bit I am rolling ever so slightly at 30 the car despite with that loud exhaust is tolerable the exhaust drone is barely obtrusive generally speaking I'd still say an E30 is still daily drivable and in Britain once a car hits 40 years old it's exempt from tax and MOT and the earlier E30s were launched in 1982 so they are actually old enough to be MOT exempt here in Britain at a red light now off we go luckily general visibility is very generous because this was a time when BMW did notch backs as opposed to fast backs rearward visibility is perfectly clear and whilst this 1980s example does not have any driving aids I don't think this car actually needs it maybe an airbag which is available on later examples but that's about it and of course this particular car I'm driving is a 4 speed automatic torque converter if you are an owner of a 5 speed manual and you'd like your car featured on this channel feel free to reach out because I have a feeling that extra gear can be beneficial on the national speed limit roads at another red light so stop start traffic is tolerable in today's case it's a bit tricky due to the heat and I don't want to put the windows down because of wind noise but it's not the end of the world it does crash over the odd drain and undulation but again it's not a deal breaker for me and the back seats are so cramped I didn't even bother trying them maybe I'll try them again on another review but just looking at those seats did not look welcoming at all especially the footwell area even behind my driving position in fact thumb to little finger can actually cover the entire area so that's how much space you get behind my driving position off we go once again into a built up area now let's see what it's like on a speed bump here's a speed bump and oh that's all the way down to zero managed to go over it but there's no way I could have gone any faster than that once again speed at 10 oh that caught the exhaust yeah. definitely not advised to go fast As I've mentioned, Swindon doesn't really have road network in town centre, so town centre driving is going to be skipped for this review. This is part of the reason why I try to only do my reviews in Gloucester, just to keep them universal. Okay, getting on to the dual carriageway. Let's see what it's like doing 70. There's an HGV in front, so also an opportunity to see what it's like overtaking slow moving traffic once the opportunity arises so currently doing 35 on the dual carriageway kick down just realised I left the window down yeah it can just about overtake slow moving traffic thankfully this is a straight six which I think BMW do better than their four cylinders generally speaking I would say a BMW with a straight six is more classically correct obviously 
four cylinders are quite popular here in Britain, like the 316 and the 318. But overtaking an HGV like that may cause some struggle. I'm currently cruising at 70 and the rev counter is currently at roughly two and a half thousand revs. So even though it's only a four speed torque converter, the revs aren't too high at national speed limit cruising, dual carriageways cruising or motorway cruising. Though in some European countries where they have 81, it could get a bit noisy over there. At least here in Britain, I am satisfied. Okay, getting back on the dual carriageway, but doing it in manual mode, so. Gear one, gear two. That's gear three. And gear four. It may only have four gears and it may be from the 80s, but reaction is fairly generous for what it is. Just a reminder, this is not their current 8 speed, but look, even still. It really gets going, and there's barely a delay on changing gear. It's not, obviously it's not razor sharp as a twin clutch, but this is still very good. And if you are looking for an E30, but you need two pedals, it's it's not exactly a disappointment you can still have fun in this two pedal option but i really want to see what a five speed manual e30 is like to drive feel free to reach out to me if you have a five speed e30 and would like me to try it out uh, overall i'd say the e30 exceeded my expectation now, the e30 has been a classic for a really long time now and prices for a good one are very steep and i'd say it really lives up to its hype considering how livable this car is and how easy to live with it is and how easy it is to drive. So let's take this back to the car park and finalize this video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me try out this BMW E30. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new. Ring the bell to stay up to speed and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.